Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO The Last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. John Glenn Level. But right now, I asked you guys yesterday whether we should appease the party or whether we should bring in the technocrats. And overall, at the time of this recording, there's more support for bring in the technocrats or bring in the best we can scientists engineers mathematicians and all sorts of experts who cares if they have no political connections cronyism and corruption is how we got nixon and nearly broke the party congress make a plan but we can appease them easily enough and this will ultimately lead to a strong support staff in the future it's more important that the officials we hire know how to do their jobs than it is uh that they know their local congressmen we're already fine for second in the moon race and we cannot rise to meet the challenge on the backs of political appointees and crossing the new frontier Actually, anything over here? Oh yeah, we're also sent, we sent soldiers to Spain as well. America is a nation founded by explorers and pioneers, a nation that has lost its way amidst the troubled times to defeat the evils of fascism. We must show the world that democracy is the way of the future, a stable bedrock upon which mankind will make its way to the stars. Our journey will not be an easy one, but such is the nature of exploration. Columbus was met with nothing but doubters until the Spanish gave him the resources he needed, and he was a novice sailor. We are sailed with many skeptics as well, but we have the brain power and resources of the greatest country in the world at our disposal. President Glenn should lead our nation and our species into a brave, brave, brave new world. And as you can see, the Iberian Union has completely fallen apart, but we have sent divisions over here. Let's see if we can uh, help out... Who's saying this? Torquato Fernandez Miranda. So we'll see what happens. Probably, is it possible to get in, the, in our faction? That'd be kind of cool, actually. But... You know it's a good mod when, of course, they have a Spanish Civil War. Decoding Iberia. Jesus Christ, can you run us through this again? The radio crackled back to life as Officer Ramsey placed a receiver back under the table. Looking back at his civilian subordinate, the lone general, the three of them were standing over a map of what was once called the Iberian Union. The scribblings of what the CIA had thought to be going on within the chaos of the Iberian Wars, or so had the media coverage been calling it. Even still, neither the news nor brass had a good idea of what was going on, and as the forward operating base was among the few to have a semi-accurate map of what Iberia had now looked like, it was quickly, quickly becoming apparent. Getting a better understanding of the wars would be essential to developing a cohesive plan of action. The line cut right back into static for a moment before the voice returned to life. Right, you got what's left of Franco's government in the rough middle of Iberia, and then the old border of Portugal to around the Catal Catalans, but it's not exactly looking like it's going to last, and it's stuck between the Republic, that's you idiots, down there, the ethnic breakaways and Basque. Ramsey gestured to the glorified civilian account and marked the map down with a half-dry felt marker that they forgot to bring along. And in the north, they've got the phalanges, you know, the uh, F guys, the fascist guys. And they're fighting Franco too, over. Ramsey felt like he had a migraine coming on. Hold on, hold on, you're saying the fascists are fighting Franco. Over. A moment of silence took hold of the radio. The general looked over at the radio and let out a sigh as the administrator snickered from across the table, still marking down the border with Catalonia. If he says yes, I'm going to throw myself out the window. The radio let out a short shriek of static. Yeah, it sounds about right. I think so. Over. The general hit his head against the table. Good God, how the heck was there going to be a union in the first place? Ramsey ignored the muttering and scribbling down another note on the status of the Basque. That's more than enough. Thanks for your help. Over and out. Operation success and dots on the screen because we have less than 2,000 political power, which sucks. Um, oh, if you want to know about this one, please go ahead. Yep. That's pretty normal. Thank you. And sir, do not. Please do not resist. Do not resist. I'm going to throw in even more. Oh, heck yeah. Not enough damage, son. Not enough damage. Oh, yeah. That's what we want to see. Good. Three, two, one. Hunter's Quarry. Heaven forbid they've had Calvar Bluff. Very, very good. Go on in if you can, too. Good job, guys. Good job. Head on in there, too. Not bad. Alright, so... We have all this stuff. We can spend political power here, but I'm not going to. We're we're we'll be fine without it. Um, anything over here? So I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that NASA has enough public support to increase budget by 35 million. Increase approval. Increase budget. It's fine. 73 percent is not bad actually. And down here, we're just gonna get more political power. And we do around here. We can do that one if we really wanted to. Um, actually, with this, yeah, you know what? We're gonna diminish. The images of the MPP now. It's RD all the way, my friends. RD. Or the cheat mod as well. And actually, let's come over here real quick. So we have all of this. It's kind of a mess. Political landscape. And we can increase our unity. Oh, look at that. Oh, whoa. I didn't even do anything like this, but their unity has collapsed. We're moderately liberal. Let's make voters lean towards our party more likely to vote for us. All right. 
I'm going to put aside differences. That's worth investing in. That's absolutely worth investing in. Oh, go right there. You cut him off completely. Woodstock, if you want to buy that, please go ahead. Far out, bro. Far, 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 far out. Fun Nats will be unlocked. Nice. Crossing the frontier. Remember that one. What are we going to do? I mean, like I said, we got quite a few uh, political uh, paths and comms to go through, but help raise our public support. Taxpayers and military will expect to see benefits from this. Oh boy. Yeah, I kind of want to do that one too. Purchasing additional uranium. Next gen delivery system. Ooh, I forgot to look up a guy, but closing the empathy path. Or deficit, really. <laughs> Although our administration's aims lie towards the heavens, it's within our responsibility to remember that our duties at the ground level. With that, the other half of our focus ought to be on the state of the United States social welfare consistently. Our government has overlooked the needs of our nation's neediest and most downtrodden souls. Thus, we must act quickly to lift the spirits residing in the workers and veterans of America who have been so greatly beaten down, in order to secure not only a more stable nation, but a caring one as well. Besides, if we manage to please American citizens enough with our work towards economic security, they will be more than reproving of our desires to fund NASA, right? Star, our administration will work to reform pension programs for the retired, elderly population of the U.S. Regularly, their hard work has not paid off in their retirement, leaving them restricted in care, but our administration will work to change that. As it should, son. Glenn, looking above and beyond, during the pres or presidential election cycle, President Glenn, bless his heart, offered the U.S. a more reasonable and connective answer to the choice of leadership for the country. He promised to unite. A country after years of division to bring each citizen closer together to help those who need it the most. And to bring the country out farther than it ever reached before. Having gone through enough time to prove himself in the presidential seat, reports indicate that the administration is most definitely focused on advancing. However, have they forgotten the rest of the campaign promises? Although the, there have been no official statements, many White House reports show a continuous focus towards the National Aeronautics and Space Administration with recent actions in the West Wing, allowing for nearly double the staff held at NASA before, as well as stark increases towards the program's funding. Furthermore, many analysts have noticed a steady increase in ties to such activities within the Congressional branch as well, as roughly half the senatorial meetings and hearings have been in regarding to the aviation industry and the country's possible future in the exploration of space. However, it has been noted that President Glenn's administration has not given any public attention towards recent events, as the only official willing to give a statement was Howard Metzenbaum, the President's Chief of Staff, who said that the President promised Americans the possibility of growth and the prosperity of manners they have not seen before, and the administration is working diligently in an effort to assure this happens. Reporters are on standby to investigate the situation developments come in. Do they not see us trying? Do they not? Oh, so there, there you are. Good. Hmm, they like hitting us. And how's the economy doing? The tunes of war? Uh, you know how much of a waste that is, right? Sh shut up, shut up. It's working. Bob's radio crackled like burning grease over the rumble of the back of the truck, traversing the desolate roads of Spain. A voice scrawled out on his way over the receiver. Uh, uh, uh weak, uh, solidifying pressy. The words over the airwaves fizzled back into nothing. Oh, son of a gun, he said it was legit. Damn, look back at Bob alongside Franklin and Michael. The, the jet Bob? The truck ran over a pothole and the small cadre of soldiers rattled around for the last time he said he wasn't. Michael led us outside to stay in, and Franklin opened up a packet of cigarettes. We're out in the middle of God knows where, I bury in this radio, for, which I got for a rock bottom price, might I add. Isn't it working? Who would have thought? Dan gave a look and reopened his novel. Bob readjusted the dial on his radio and couldn't help but wonder if his friends were right. The crackle subsided for a moment, and Il Cadullo's voice broke through the static. Thanking God for his Spanish lessons in his te teenage years, he listened in on the broadcast. Manager of the wires, once done, you can safely fire the rifle. On the subject of treating burns, one must remember to be calm and to keep your first aid on, on hand at all times. Taking out the... Jeez, you guys hearing this stuff? It's like the Germans all over again. How compelling, Bob. How absolutely compelling. 5% is not good enough. That's slightly better, but still not worth much. What 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 y'all can do over here? Actually, we can't get involved down here, so. <coughs> but it is what it is, and happy September, everybody. Nice. Cool. So let's concentrate our force a little bit better. I don't think that we really got, got concentrated. I want to come over here. Great operational success. Pretty good. I guess Ho Chi Minh. Goodbye. 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 Anything else up top here that we really care about? Ooh. Raise the spending cap. Yeah, I, yeah, we're not going to do that one. As much as I want to, it's not worth it. This one could be worth it, though. Yeah, that one actually would be quite worth it. So, oh my gosh, we got all the... Uh, I kind of want to build up all the nuclear reactors first before we start doing that. Maybe we shouldn't, though. Eh, whatever. 
going to get rid of these nuclear reactors. We'll get them. We'll get it more done later on. But we got to make sure that we get all this finished. Uh, we'll finish fo fo focusing on all these ones first. Screw it. We don't have that. Probably still getting slightly better. Yeah. Ready right, to spending cap? I. I don't want to hurt liberal democracy. We, uh, we gotta wait. We gotta wait. That advanced attack heli is very nice. Let's just do it stuff ahead of time anyways, we'll do it. Anyways, and then... Boom. Nice. Just go ahead. Just... Blitz him. If possible, of course. So nice, so nice. Kind of the programs would be nice and all, but no. It's even worse than the other one. 200... Yeah, actually doing this one, raise the spending cap is not as good. Um, 3.5, because you get more money to do this twice, but then, eh, it's only cost a little bit more, though. Eh, I don't know, we'll see. It's probably one more political power. Oh, we got a circle, how great. But not for long. Nice. Oh, hello. Well, that's not bad. Because they're doing quite well. Never enough bandages. A young, young man came to the doctor's aid as the doctor forced him to press both of his palms into the bleeding chest of another man, screaming in agony after being hit by shrapnel from an explosive. The soldier was on the ground with nothing protecting his wounds from an infection. Dr. Lewis knew the man wouldn't make it and he was losing too much blood too quickly, so he left the terrified young man with a dying soldier to tend to the others that he could save. 10, 20, 30, 50, 100, 200. You counted. Too much. Too little time. Too little equipment. His strength thought it was abruptly cut as he had spent unknowingly tripped on a man's legs. Falling down to the puddle of blood beside the man, without hesitation, he threw his body closer to the man on the ground, his coat turning to the brown color of the mud. Where are the bandages? He screamed at the general direction of the people around him. This man is an open wound, but nobody turned to look at him. His shots were drowned out by the sounds of screaming and the obnoxious splashing of footsteps that riddled the vicinity, and with nobody else around available. He ripped a sizable portion of his now dirty coat and wrapped it around the man's left leg multiple times, covering a hole an inch wide as a piece of cloth turned from brown to red. You're in trauma and in shock, but please sit up and press this with both of your hands, the doctor said tensely. The man was a Spaniard and didn't understand a single word that Dr. Lewis said, so the doctor forcefully sat him up and placed the soldier's hands on the cloth. The man roared out in pain as he did. This is for your own good, lo siento. With his limited knowledge in Spanish, he apologized. He then stood up, leaving the soldier on the ground once again, and this time he searched for the bandages himself, so he may treat the next patient properly. But there weren't any left. It's pretty. This, honestly, if Spain is this divided and actually has a civil war like this, it, that that's, this seems pretty darn uh, huh, it's devastating to the entire country for decades. Not one more failure though. Um, a thunderstorm had overtaken the night sky across the state of Maryland. Great flashes of lightning and the booming cannons of thunder coated continued to rage and took hold of the dark clouds above the White House, while showers overtook the streets and drowned out the vegetation of the nation's capital there. President John Glenn slept solemnly, warmed by the covers of his bed and his loving Anna in the dark room he called home throughout his presidency. Raum for ein, zwei, and dry hitting the surface now, Kona said as the crowd touched down upon the gray wasteland, where the great blue and green sphere floated thousands upon th thousands of miles behind him. Honored by his leadership, Kona was declared to be the first to take the step, and thus the proud German floated it softly to the surface of the moon. He turned to grab something out of the landing craft, walking towards, walking forward several places. From Germania to the stars and beyond, he said as he planted the flag adorned with the black swastika to forever stare back at his home planet there. Millions of Germans celebrated across the Reich, taking part in a celebration to honor the glory, wonder, and majesty of the Reich's power. Across the seas, however, Americans within the cap Americans within the capital were devastated by the events of the past few hours. Men and women stood, crying into one another's shoulders. Project leads cursed and kicked, going into so far as vandalizing their own work stations in anger. Hours felt like days, and with every passing moment, the repercussions of the failure became apparent. Projects were left in dark rooms, shelves. Workers were leaving far earlier than they were scheduled to, and new reports of the budget slashes came with every passing hour. Dear Stain, the once successful organization's pride. John, are you alright? Anna said she shook her husband. The president rocked back up within his bed as cold streams of sweat journeyed down his forehead, burning his eyes. He looked down at he looked at his wife's word expression while he wiped away the sweat, thinking about everything that transpired within his dreams. The president realized what had happened and only did the logical action in his mind next. He gave a large embrace to his wife. We won't fail again, Annie. We won't fail again. Um, our neediest. How do you expand the scope of the pension reform? Our downtrodden. Petra Bell. Um, let's see. Which one do we want to do next? Next gen triad. I'm mean, this was that's not bad to do. Ooh, they do get more political power here. Recruiting Disney. We basically do everything here before we can uh you know, keep going on. But no bills being debated in the Congress. A little more unified. Time to speak softly. Biggest nuclear arsenal. Oh crap, do we have to start spending 
Hmm. Nuclear Iceland. Uh, biggest nuclear arsenal. Oh man, we're gonna spend a lot of money then. Money never stops flowing. The new NASA. The dream ever died. Uh, we'll do this one next. NASA these days is a sad show of what it used to be during the glorious days where we won the race in orbit. Funding is all but dried up, and the majority of its facilities are already decrepit after years of neglect. The German victory broke America's will to continue the space race, but not NASA. With the few employees left from the early days still believe in its founding vision, we're ready to do the hard work of bringing NASA back to its full capability. We've not forgotten how the Nazis sold the lunar landscape with the swastika in 1962, and we will not forget our unfinished business on the moon. It's time to catch up in the race for the stars. Good, good, good. Anything here? Brazilian stuff. We don't really care. Um, anything here? Support parties here. Eight friendly factions. Uh, sabotage. Da, 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 da. England has ended civil war. Sure. Stateroom. Huh. Should have done this a while ago. But I want to talk about a couple comments as well. Cool. Such as, we'll need some right hand or right side domestic politics or policies under closing the empathy path to make sure we do well here yeah that's a goal that's why we're, do, we're going to start with that one pretty early on um let's see any is there any walls playthrough that can repeal the cra the civil rights act uh yeah we pretty much already re i think we repealed it in this campaign but then it, it came back of course so technically i think so so yeah but yeah if you do actually do walls and you want a successful run and actually fully repeal it you get two terms as walls and there you go no more civil rights if you do it successfully. Someone says, go full liberal with the bills and wait for the 1970s Senate elections, then start doing the, the actual path or social path or something like that. So, yeah, we could do that. We'll see what happens. MPP isn't very popular now because their unity has collapsed, which is good. And then, do education, welfare, and to get populist or political capital first before everything else, you know, kind of transpires. We could try that too, yeah. That's probably what we're going to do in the end. And someone says, a truly perfect economy. Operation Stateroom. Support something, something, something. Everyone about that was your head. We can work with all of this England. Down here, and over here. Yeah, cool. Cool. Let's keep going, let's keep going. It's only three divisions down here, so it's not bad. Yeah, the economy ain't doing too bad. No debt, no problem. Of course, we might have to start spending some more stuff. Blindsided. And that's when it turned out the thing didn't even fit. We must have tried it hundreds of times, but in the end, Private West's story was cut off with a rough hand on the back of the head with the closest thing American infantry in Iberia received to affection. His tale about his time back in the city was met with a chorus of stop BSing and shut your mouth from the rest of the jeep. As someone had gone over his eyes, but he was more focused on protests than either way. I'm serious, guys. I his vision was totally blocked. He didn't seem, even see it coming. Just the wish of the rocket and the explosion of his transport turned into a fireball. Merrill West didn't know how he ended up on the ground or where his helmet had gone, but that didn't matter. He stared up the cliffside they had been driving along, where he could still see the slight trail that the rocket had made going downhill, directly onto the position. The same position that was still a smoking wreck of the jeep and a man. He stood, trembling, only to immediately regret his decision. Get your heads down, Private. The corporal was a brick wall of a man, just being tackled by him had only reinforced that comparison, just in the nick of time, too. Merrill felt the dirt and rocks kicked up by a spray of bullets just over his head, where he'd been standing not a second ago. You got a death wish or something? The corporal had grabbed Merrill's head, turning it in his direction so that Private West could get a full spittle in the face experience as orders were barked. Stay in the smoke, crawl away, and just like that, he pushed Merrill back towards his by his face, seeing the young man sprawling behind him. Merrill had to crawl away from the road, following a subtle trail left behind of marks from where knees were dragging underneath the smoke. Boots had gone, where brush and grass had been disturbed. There, there might have been a half dozen others at most, limping their way off the road to safety wherever they might, where safety might be. They let their own guard down. Closing the empathy deficit. My fellow Americans, I stand for you today now with a dream, but the, with the sobering, waking knowledge of the injustice faced by millions of our fellow citizens. I've heard it said of me that I'm but a stargazing dreamer, ready to leave behind the worries of this world for dreaming of the sky. Rest assured, this cannot be further from the truth. While I myself and most members of my administration remain convinced of mankind's future among the stars, I am not and have never been blind to the fact that to reach for the celestial plane, America, must utilize its resources in such a way as to maximize human potential. With a sick and impoverished population, the U.S. will never be the best it can be. Those of you who follow my campaign for office may recall my promise of true reform for the true Americans, because the true American is not some executive sitting in his mansion. And hatching ploys increases already considerable fortune, nor is it the women, or woman, who bars her children from sharing a school with those of a different appearance or creed. The true American is the old lady who gives her last penny to a child who stomach rumbles with hunger. The man who volunteers his time, who patrols his borough for criminals and those who stay with the sick or dying, those who care about this great American community. The nation has a deficiency of empathy towards the downtrodden, one that can only be removed through such a sense of community. Today, my administration is proud to announce work towards one of the capstone promises. 
True pension reform. No longer will the old have to live in poverty or burden the children so they cannot work. A grand speech. Now we're going to wait and do this one like I, did. I said this one earlier, but we're going to wait to do this one just for a little bit. So we're going to rush down this entire tree first. Our neediest. In drafting the bill for pension reform for the country, the administration has discussed a possible expansion of the developing legislation. In particular, we've realized that a good group of good yet paying people have gone underlooked by the government and the people of the United States, the disabled citizens of America. Consistently, disabled Americans overcome the difficulties of the conditions. They receive no care for the lengths that they go through to provide for themselves and their families. Our administration seeks to reverse this injustice. And reach out to the disabled to bring them a brighter day by offering greater pensions towards them and their families. Furthermore, increased benefits will provide care for the military veterans who, through the fighting for the nation, are forced to come home with debilitating injuries, particularly from the Second World War. And will seek to provide for their families as well. Besides, that's what Annie would want, right? And our downtrodden. Well, with the work our cabinet has put in developing the incursions, we need it in this bill to bridge every gap in American empathy. The most unfortunate persons of our society have been noted in being consistently looked past by presence of history as well. Here we see the poor and destitute. Those with little to no economic stability in their lives to begin with and suffer through their lives with the difficulties they were born in, rather than creating for themselves. With respect and care for such individuals, the proposed bill includes a section regarding the expansion of financial security nets and payments towards Americans who find themselves living in a state of poverty. With this, we shall engage in a great fight against the issue of increasing poverty for the lives of American citizens across the country and provide for them a method of escaping the circumstances they have been dealt with. Good, good, good. Anything else here? Uh, propulsion. Anything up top here as well? Just in case. Ah, that's good. Got to keep it on this as well. Can we raise a budget? Yes, please. Yeah, I'm going to spend all the political power doing that. Let's see. So increase it by 75 billion. Or million. I wish it was billion. Million. Public approval go up a little more. Fine as well. And maybe that one eventually, but yeah, we're going to need to work on that one. So also, I did realize that we need to do, eventually, the enrichment plants here. It provides a state with the production of enriched uranium for, to, for use in nuclear weapons. The exact quantity of nuclear weapons produced each month will depend on the level of our nuclear expenditures. No, no uranium, no warheads, basically. So, But we'll finish off all that stuff as best we can. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I hold a vision is gone, bye-bye. Not bad. And let's go there now. Find enemy divisions, just gun them down, man. Just gun, 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 gun them down. Not bad, my friends. Not bad. Head on in. Just keep beating the crap out of them. Because that's the goal for now. And... Go right there. Because these guys are looking very... Oh my gosh, looking really weak. Patience is a virtue. So the sergeant brought worse to choose this spot, or maybe it was General Sushi. Rudy had not taken his hand off his rifle since he got here. The other six members of his squad had taken their seats along the crest of the hill that had been selected for them, but Rudy still stood. It must have been for 12 hours straight at this point, between the mission they had just completed and waiting for evac. Alex, for his part, had his eyes glued to the clear blue skies up above, ears peeled for the familiar thrumming of the helicopter blades. What's your grip griping about? You know we got to be out in the open for the hellies to see us. And the hellies can see us, so can the enemy. From all sides, too, given our position. Terrence, the squad leader. Gave a brief chirp, chuff of laughter. The enemy is that way, Rudy. He pointed back down the road in the direction they came, and they, they blo we blocked that road off. Rudy shook his head, his arm trembled, and Alex stood up, hand reaching toward his gun. You aren't listening. Rudy spoke with a shiver, shiver. eyes glancing in the opposite direction down the road ahead. You hear the gunshots up there? Yeah, the artillery? That is the like ours. The squad went silent as a grave as they listened, as a grave as they listened ahead. He wasn't wrong either. In this area, the Americans had the heaviest artillery. Even in the distance, it was obvious that was what was firing ahead was much smaller, much lighter. The lines moved back while we were gone. Trevor fretted, shuddering as he stood and brought his gun up to his shoulder. He was the first to lift his gun barrels well, turning his back to the middle of the group and rubbernecking side to side. And if evac should be here by now, Matthew said, or added, entirely unhelpful as he went back to the one back to back with Trevor's own gun aimed toward the sky. One by one, the isolated Americans found themselves with their backs to one another, and various sisters standing and kneeling, far, far further behind enemy lines than they had ever known. Minutes felt like years as the Iberian sun beat down on those seven men, waiting to see whether death or deliverance would find them first. Time stands still, and death of J. Oh, not JFK, but JFK's already dead, but Joseph Kennedy, if you want to that, please go right ahead. His dynasty, of course, lives on. And we got him. All I care about is deleting their enemy divisions, because they are crushing us pretty harshly right now. Or maybe not crushing us, but they're, they're doing quite a bit of damage to us, so. And we got to make sure that we survive. these guys survive. We're getting quite close to Seville. Right. You just go right there. There you go. That'll work. You might be able to go another division, too, as well. 
Come on. They're in circle. That's good, good, good. Oh, actually, there's two in circle divisions. Hey. Not bad. If I do say so myself. Don't let them get free. Don't get them. Don't let them get free. No, no, no. No, no, no. <coughs> Happy December, everybody. December, December, December. Cool. Nice job, guys. Nice job. Two dollars, cool, huh? So now the goals go over here and go that way. The poor huddled masses. The poor constituted potential problem for the Pension Security Act with low income, they would likely not be able to sufficiently pay into the program to such a degree that they could live a comfortable life in retirement. While this bill has already had a section added ensuring that welfare payments for low income households are exempted from the pension taxation, that would further complicate their already troubled situation, that only worsens the situation they may face upon retirement. The progressive faction of the House presented a package of amendment sections and riders to the bill to address the issue. The amendments authorize the government to access welfare funds and pay the pension checks for low income and pensioners, while the riders expand said welfare budgets by increasing social safety nets. Unemployment benefits and social assistance programs. Needless to say, adding this package to the bill will be a courageous decision. The conservatives and business lobby are quite are likely to howl bloody murder, or at least Buharanus mania, at expanding a welfare via rider, but with but like with the disability provisions, there's a chance we may be aided by NPP defectors and so pass the bill. Can we risk it? Try it. Gonna risk the whole bill over this. Um, I don't remember how do you how much support do we have? Let's see. We have twenty two oh my gosh, we have twenty two Republicans. Oh that's not good. Yeah, I, I, I screw this whole thing up, but we'll see what happens. Uh Democrats twenty two. There's eighteen. That's forty. Ooh, that's not good. You know what? We're gonna force it anyways. You know what? Even with cons commands, I'm gonna force it anyways, because this makes more sense. I'm more here for the economy, to be honest with you, and the whole story with Glenn, so we're gonna try it. Support would decrease among Democrats and far right. We'll see what happens. Pension bill security bill. Pension security bill. With the revisions towards the legislation finalized, our administration will send the bill towards voting on the Congress floor. Although many in our nation believe such a bill to be an insult towards the Treasury, we do we will do all we can to make sure the bill is secured for at least the less fortunate in our society. We, as Americans, have promised to live within a nation that champions freedom, justice, prosperity, and progress, and the bill we compose will only expand upon the possibilities of living in a greater and empathetic society. The elderly, disabled, and the less fortunate are Americans all the same, and thus deserve the right to a fair society for them, and thus will enjoy a substantial increase in their provisions for all that they have equally suffered. Though many in the House and Senate believe the bill to be far too expensive and a political distraction from the President's extreme fascination with space, we must do what we can for our nation. We might not be able to get that. But we need, we need to get it maxed out. So good. Go around, begin. Go around, go around. Nice. Both to hold for now. Oh, you can go right there, that's fine too. There you go. Not bad. Keep killing him, keep killing him. Nice. Good. And the gun. Ooh, some of our allies are just overran too. That sucks. But that's why we overrun enemy divisions as well. Hopefully we can get some more Republicans here in Congress. <coughs> Alright, come on, keep going, keep going. We're kind of back to our start position here. She does kind of suck. Force it through, force it through, it's almost 1970. Good. Destroy that German division. Good. Nice. Happy 1970, everybody. Happy New Year, New Decade, New Us. Yes, please. Alright, oh my god. It's just like so hard sometimes. Come on, come on, come on. I don't care. And you have to have it on because sometimes the game will just crash so hard.
And a great circuit tree, not bad. Uh, I'll come back over here and do some of that too. Good. Nice. Lost and forgotten. While the party as a whole has been fired up by President Glenn's speech earlier this week, Kratz has started a show as usual. Young and progressive House members have contacted us to inquire whether the administration could be, use its influence over the body to have the pension security bill amended and committees specifically. They want a proviso requiring expanded pension benefits for those struggling with disabilities required over the course of their life. The administration has already been weighing whether to raise benefits for those born with disabilities, but this puts the president in a more difficult position. The progressive will be offended if we do not help all disabled. Not just some, but all the same, the conservatives and free market elements of the party are already critical enough of the proposal as is. They are unlikely to support aiding those who made poor career choices or failed to act in a safe manner. House Majority Leader proposed a way around this hurdle. A proposed rider for the bill was to increase military pensions for disabled veterans. This has MPP support. Should we fold the disabled veteran rider into the amendment for those disabled as adults? We might just get enough MPP support to pass the bill even with defections from our own party. This will greatly offend the conservatives, though. What should we do it? Must we do it for the disabled? Because right now it probably won't pass, right? Now oh, there's us. Um, yeah, it's not bad. Actually, it was a political landscape looking like. 40, 430 billion, huh? Senate. Voting. Oh! Actually, we have enough. Days hold. Days left to hold a vote. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Okay, look at that. 54% of the Senate supports the bill. Their support is high. Should pass as it clearly stands, but we should be careful not to tip the balance. So, who do we have? There are 11 Democrats. We actually got 11 Democrats. We got all 22 Republicans. 11 Democrats, which is not bad, actually. All the center, which is 40, then 40, 51, and three of the far right? Okay, that's better than I thought it would be. Just keep beating the crap out of these guys. Alright, after that one, beating back Big Pharma. Because who likes Big Pharma? With a rapid advance in technology regarding health, the average American citizen's illnesses have been well studied and can easily be taken care of. However, well, they must bear with the suffering, the pain, and the outrageous prices of the towering pharmaceutical companies, joking the average citizen who may be already suffering from a wide range of health issues. Such companies have taken a mix of shadowy economic strategies and hurting average Americans, and it's absolutely unacceptable to allow such practices to continue. Our administration will bring Big Pharma back in line with the, of acceptance. We'll issue several restrictions on these companies' activities, and stand resolute in our fight against the monopoly of the health industry as an industry that seeks to serve the sick and dying ought to act morally sound and economically, economically responsible. God, if only, man. If only. You find them, you gun them down. And I'm talking about the, uh, huh, the companies. Not, 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 not fighting here in Spain. Or Iberia. Iberia. Do you bury you? I bury you. Now it's looking quite a bit better for us, ain't it? Yes, I do. Yes, I do be. Yes, there we go. Oh, I keep forgetting to look up here. Oh, crap. Mm. 83% is pretty nice. Uh, there we go. That's good. How are we doing with this stuff? Oh, we're building stuff up. We're good. Keep building. Keep building for now. I love me the helicopters. Helicopters are so nice. 500 air XP ain't enough. Not bad. Let's see what else we can do. Um, yeah, these guys are still flying around. I don't want them to win here too quickly, but we'll see. Well, there's a plot of land now that's been uh, encircled, but we'll see. Go, 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 boys. Don't get encircled. General Building Construction 2, thank you very much. Oh, we got encircled. That sucks, whatever. We're all put. Please, thank you. Senate Class Elections. Oh, boy. We're going to vote R&D. All right. So what are the predictions like? Nothing. Well, if that's the case, I want to get New York. New York has way too many electoral votes. I mean, it makes sense. They got a lot of population, but that just, in my opinion, too many electoral votes. Too many electoral votes, bro. Way, 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 way too many. Oh, look at that. Yes. Yes. Ciudad Real. 
Industrial management, very good. Oh, I hope it's not going to be a bad year for us. I hope it's not going to be a bad year. Getting close and close to Madrid. Speech, and how beautiful it was. Glenn stood on the podium and took it all in. The people, the cheers, the atmosphere over the past few months. John felt like he was starting to crack under pressure, but days like these remind him that it's all worth it and that there's a greater purpose to his labor. After waiting one, two minutes for the crowd to calm down, he stepped forward and began a speech. He went through the formalities, thanked the people he was supposed to thank, mentioned how happy he was to be in Florida and the whole spiel. It took about ten minutes and was already enough to impress a mass of supporters of President Israeli, but the meat of his speech. The party wrote himself after being stuck by a bout of creativity was what cemented its place in the history books of the future. All of his other accomplishments regarding welfare and more were great, but this was the most mo this was the moment people will remember him for a hundred years. There's no strife, prejudice, and national conflict in outer space yet. Its hazards are hostile to us all. Its conquests deserve the best of the all mankind. Its opportunity for peaceful cooperation may never come again, but why some may say or the moon? Why choose this as a goal? And what they may well ask why climb the highest mountain? Why less than fifty years ago fly the Atlantic? We chose to go to Mars. We choose that. We choose it. We choose to go to Mars and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept. One that we are unwilling to postpone. And one which we intend to win and others too. It's for these reasons that I regard the decision at the beginning of my presidency to shift our efforts in space from low to high gear as among the most important decisions that will may be made during my incumbency in my office, in the office of the presidency. A pause. A thunderstorm of applause erupted, and John couldn't help but smile. Germany might have been the first nation to get to the moon, but the space wasn't over yet. And the people of America are with him all the way, ready to push the boundaries of the final frontier to regions yet unknown. Literally shooting for the stars. Nothing like it. John Glenn, the experience. Hmm. John Glenn. Kind of like Joe Rogan, but whatever. And we'll spend more naval expenditures. Naval, naval expenditures. Uh. Nuclear expenditure probably later on. If we could go straight across and not get killed off that way, that'd be great. We'll see. Bench and Security Act passes. Well, he did, despite the internal disagreements of the party, the bill has passed the House and is almost guaranteed to pass the Senate. Finally, we've taken up some small steps towards a fair and just America on which all, all can live worthy lives. Bingo in Florida, anybody? Nice. Support in the South, Rockies, and West will disapprove. That sucks. Ooh, that's gonna hurt us more. Party rate will get approved, though. And GDP growth goes up a 0.4%. Nice. Oh, oh, look at that. So now what are we looking like? We still have surplus? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And any of the right to work. The American work, one of the corner pieces of American economic stability, has been in crisis for a great amount of time. Throughout contemporary history, workers have experienced great inequality in their respective workplaces. And while unions aim to fix this, the lack of membership due to American right to work laws have been restarted the imbalances within the workplace to combat this. We must draft a bill which would tear down the right to work laws which have created such imbalances in the workplace in doing so. Workplaces may require the workers within to be a part of the associated union, stopping the balance of workers who receive the benefits of union membership without actually committing the sacrifice of official membership with this. American workplace will become a far more fair and just area of American life, but in confidence for the few for American workers to instead of live and work towards greater unity and prosperity. Two months to get through the Senate, our public support will increase. Oh boy, we'll, we will see. Ah, there it is. Good. Suppress the opposition if we possibly can. Nothing like a little suppression to go a long way. Oh, now they have to do another group. Yay! Please just don't get encircled and killed off, though. Don't you dare, you son of a rock sucker. Da. <coughs> Still have surplus of land. I love it. I actually go there so they can't do too much about that. That'll be good. Force it. Good. Operational success. Nothing there yet. That's fine. Ah, German divisions go bye-bye. So we love, love, love to see. Oh, look at that. We have an excellent campaign. Great. Nice job, guys. Nice job. And 
there yet. Any up top here? No. Down here? No. Alright. See what we can do. Good job, good job, good job. We'll go right there. Being back, big pharma. That's really nice. <coughs> Excuse me. Still going down, though. It's alright. Happens. Let's go ahead. Should be able to win. Should. How about you guys just go in and do something like that? The drug deal. Encouraged by the recent success against the exploitative pharmaceutical industry in America, President Glenn is committed to the price controls over most on most of the over-counter pharmacia, with particular stringent controls on medicine for chronic conditions, i.e. heart medicine and medication. So they had the party seriously split on the matter with the Dixiecrats and the California Republicans being strongly opposed to any such intrusions on free enterprise, not to mention the profit of their home donations, or their home states make from Big Pharma in form of jobs, taxes, and campaign donations. The proposal, however, enjoys significant support in the Northeast, one of President Glenn's most important voter bases. It is politically sensible to put pass price controls to at least some extent, but we can never push it through Congress as it stands. As such, we'll have to do it via executive order, something which is sure to infuriate the opponents of the proposal, especially among the state's rights proponents within the Democrats. We'll also be able, unable to point the blame at Congress this way, so a choice must be made about how much division of the party we're willing to risk over this matter. Moderate price controls may be better to compromise. We can't enter orbit without firing all thrusters? Let's go for limited price controls? No, heck no. Want to spend political power? Going to spend big political power, man. I want the Northeast, and we hopefully keep California too. And we can get Texas. That'd be awesome too. Yeah, I'm not gonna hurt up hurt infrastructure right now. Ooh, yes. Yes, we gotta cook. Oh boy. Oh crap. Let me know half measures if we can help it. With the one executive order, we'll spend our spear. Big Pharma, once and for all. No longer will it will be exploited by the greedy monopolists. Our approval ratings are soaring across the board, but the party is furious at the railroading past the pro-business wings, especially in the western states with a huge loss of income. The party is fraying at the edges, and it probably won't be too long before we face an open revolt over this issue on Capitol Hill. Well, sometimes you just gotta let the stew cook so you can chew the red, as they say in Appalachia. We need to let this proposal cook in the media and look at the response from the public and Congress before pushing it through. Oh, that's not good. Well, at least the MPP unity's collapsed, and we won in uh, over here, too. Which should help us out, right? In unity, we prosper. Mm-hmm, I see. Uh, President Glenn muttered as he scribbled some notes down quickly on a small notebook, retrieved from his pocket, with the Oval Office's phone in the other. Completely understood, and in doing so, we'll consider everything we can for your idea, and we are here for the American worker. Don't you forget that. Be sure to reach back if there are any other projects we can expand upon. All right, thank you, George. President Glenn said with a small laugh before hanging up the phone, Well, Mr. President, who was that, if I may ask, Metzenbaum asked, having been called into the Oval Office while well in the middle of a phone call. Mr. Metzenbaum, I'd like to ask you for some advice. We've already gotten to work on hammering out all the details of this abolishment of the right to work laws. Now, we have some possibility to reach out even further, the President said. <clears throat> Mr. Metzenbaum, could never quite get back to the past the shock of it nearly every moment of Gen Glenn's genuine empathy. Well, Mr. President, the large corporations have already expressed their opposition to such support for the unions, but what did you have in mind? President. Sat in silence, pondering the issue back and forth. Mr. Metzenbaum, I just got off with a colleague working with a few groups of, to collaborate on some legislative ideas. It's informing me that unions across the U.S. have seen their desire to enforce a six-hour workday. Uh, across the board, Glenn said, watching Metzenbaum's typical shocked expression. Mr. President, uh, sir, I know that we must care for the American worker, but businesses will be at a party straw to be reached that far, and the Department of Commerce will establish possible economic difficulties if we reach too far out for the unions, the Chiefs of Staff nodded. Or no do. I understand, Howard, but if we aren't going to be the one that reaches out that far, who will, he said, doling respect out to his justifiably shocked colleague. The American workforce has been one of diligence, one of survival, but shouldn't such men and women enjoy the freedom of their lives along with their the work life? <clears throat> or are they right, and we're all going to pay it for it? Or worse, Bill gets killed before we can exchange or change anything. Phone in the Department of Commerce, we're going to push further. Guaranteed 8-hour workday will be added to the bill. 8-hour workday. Don't worry about that much. Or, it says six. Is this a no? more face more severe backlash in case we fail to pass this? Hmm. Well, that kind of sucks. I want a six-hour workday. God dang it! What the heck? I've been we've been lied to, my friends. But opium wars. Ooh, opium. 
President John Glenn gritted his teeth in frustration with pen twirling around and round between his fingers as if he was attempting to hypnotize with concerned staffers watching his quiet fuming. In front of him on the resolute desk lay half a dozen of sheet of paper, their edges frayed upon from Glenn's barely contained urge to crumple them up as he read. A reaction from parts of the party he had been expected when the press controls were announced, but not this strong a revolt. The letter from the House Majority Leader was lengthy and flowery in its expression of concern with the integrity of the party's congressional representation, but that threat, but the threat veiled between the lines was obvious even to someone without long political experience. Open protests in the media, corporate donors backing out of campaign funding and perhaps trying to sabotage the economics of the insurance market to weaken the party on the West Coast, even a threat of attempted congressional censure from his own party. Should the president not limit his plan and price ceilings for drugs? Sir, the chief of staff, Jeff, what have, have you decided on a response? <clears throat> Waffle House. Folks, poor go down significantly. Voters in the West Coast be infuriated. They're going to be pissed off anyways. Cl clean these eyesores off my desk. We're staying course. We ain't moving around. We're staying course. What type of yellow belly pieces of garbage do you think we are? Oh, we're, we're literally just already here. Nice. Yeah, if we get these guys as observers, that'd be great. Polls are updated. Very cool. The unkept promise. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. After fighting constantly in regards to the reformation of several pension programs, we have already made strong leaps into progress for social welfare programs in American society, but every program created thus far has been aimed towards a specific group, and some look outward into a social security program for every American citizen around the nation. The beginning of such a creation will act as a new means of providing for the average man and woman, and usher in a new wave, a new wave of confidence, prosperity in the time of financial fears and instability, and safeguarding Americans from financial failure, failure and offering provisions in the case of economic recession will put many Americans' fears of progress to rest and allow the American economy to expand as it never has before, yes. While maybe at the cost of the government funding, is it not the care and concern of the people that we're looking to expand upon in the first place and offer them happiness in such dire times? Ooh, yes. Drafting the Social Security Act. Cannot drag our feet on this. Goes a little more unified, more political power. Glenn refused to bow to the corporate shells on the West Coast and Southern reactionaries and our administration is reveling in the triumph of the progressive faction of the party. Our approval is shot up not only with our Northeastern base, but also with the public in general. Oh, sure, the West Coast the representatives and governors are furious and the party is buckling under internal division and the stock market has taken a notable downturn in recent days, but surely this is a small price to pay for cementing Glennism as a thinking of a progressive future, whether it's between the stars or here at the Blue Marble. And people say we don't care about life down here. Glennism. Oh my goodness, I love Glennism. Glennism for the win. Glennism. So we get what? More public approval support? Better poverty rate? Admin efficiency begins to improve? Oh, yes, please. Oh, God, yes. God, I love you know too much, probably. Um, nice. Good, good. We're done with all that stuff, which is nice. Aircraft stuff. Yes, better Jeff Vitals. Thank you very much. Kill him off. Have fun. Oh, we can't even force it. No, we can't. Oh, wait, he's, he's still doing something. Oh, oh, hello there. We're going to need a lot of money. Lots and lots of money. Um, well, since we're here, we want to start doing the enrichment plant. Start doing some of that stuff. There you go. Not bad. Go here first. And the whole corner of them cut them all off. Ooh, increase public support by a large amount, 9%. Oh, it's already 99%, so we don't need to do that, so. It's not bad. Oh, they're taking the capital without us. Iberian uh, Cascade, Democratic victory in Iberia. Secret to all members of the Central Intelligence Committee, or agency, <laughs> Iberian region. The colloquially named Iberian Wars have come to an end. Regardless of the victorious faction, America should be making diplomatic moves to accommodate for the new order that will wash over the peninsula. The CIA considers Iberia to be of great strategic importance and prepare the necessary funds and resources to plan agents into the country to make sure we have intel on what the government is planning on doing. Eyes everywhere. Oh, we get them in our sphere. Oh my god, yes. This has actually been really great for us. Holy crap. Nice job, guys. Nice job. Nice. God, if we can get them in, that would be awesome, but yeah. I'm disappointed that we couldn't get Italy in, and these guys actually... Oh. Wait, when did you guys separate? I didn't realize you guys all broke apart. Oh, Cameroon is there too, but yeah. Bath Africa? Congolese Republic looking good. But you're all in the observer, open observer. So honestly, 
Could be a lot worse. I just wish we got Italy in with us. That would be so nice. Cool. Good RD campaign. Very nice, guys. Very nice. Mm, there you go. Because we can. Ending right to work. The uncapped promise. Um, let's see. Honestly, it's probably better to do this one. The girl more unified. Beat down the Democrats. I don't want to beat them down just because I don't want to grow as divided. Why would we do this one? Hold back the South. Increase support for the bill. Increase. Popular the far right will increase in the South. Our friends in the center, though, does help us out quite a bit, too. Support for the bill. Increase among center MVP. Oh, then, but both, both, uh, uh, but popular the MPPC will increase in New England. I'm not the language. Yeah, I don't want to decrease RD support, but as long as both are decreasing, I think that's okay. Voters in the North and Steel Belt will approve. I think we'll do rally the Republicans. I did this one too last time, but whatever. If you want to read about this one and this one, please go ahead. But with the Social Security program having begun the process of drafting, we've managed to build towards abiding the fears of American citizenry in regards to the financial. Uh, situations. We must stand resolute or support and joy at the prospect of reaching out to the people of the U.S. with ideas of the bill and thus must rally support for work throughout the states to maintain success. In particular, the Northern Midwest and Republican branch of the Mid-RDs has been a celebration of the creation of such social security measures. We must capitalize on the situation to increase public approval of our administration and show that the American people are confident in the controversial program. Doing so will allow the party to recognize, consolidate, expand, or reorganize, offering the administration a large amount of support and being able to continue advances towards Ameri America's success. It's all we want. We want America to be successful. I want people to be successful. And that's why we're still here. Is this all glitched? Ooh. We're in the South. It's all Republican, I guess. Texas. I want Texas with us. Ooh, the RDs have a slight, slight, slight advantage. It could be supports a million. That's good. Good. Have them run on a crappy campaign. Crappy campaign. Crappy, crap, crappy. This wasn't too bad. Can we invest? Oh, we can. Balls are up there. That's nice. It's the best 10 billion. It barely went up anymore, but whatever. Yeah, investing in does nothing, apparently. Which sucks. Oh, crap. What the heck? Minus 43. Ooh, we actually get... Maybe get three more? Oh, we get a lot more Republicans. Look at that. So that's us right now. Oh, the Northeast is going to flip. And some of the South is going to turn to the MPP again. Oh, that's not good. That's cool. I love how you can flip things around like this. This is really cool. I love it. I love TNO you know, too, way too much, like I said before. Ninety-five and a half, huh? Just budget, yes, please, yes, sir. Mm. Not by much. We're going to need all the PP though. Our friends in the center. While Americans across the nation are reminded or remain divided over a plethora of issues, it's now without questions the possibility of success through bipartisan efforts is there, even if it's hard to find. So, it's time to reach out. The central branch of the MPP has remained steadfast in their desire to aid American citizens and empower the American worker. And with their steps towards the Social Security Act, we must reach out to our friends within the center, National Progressive Party. Doing so not only allows us to garner further support on the bill, but also serves to end the fears of the many Americans as well. As seeing that the two parties which divide the U.S. political system working together will bring mass support for administration, even if opposition towards the bill still remains vocal. Within our own party, as well as the National Progressive Party, we must stand together we are to see the empowerment of the work American worker. Yes, please. Absolutely. Oh, man, who does not love Glenn? Glenn Rod is just Glenny, Glenny, Glenny. Makes me happy doing Glenn. <clears throat> oh, it's a cold war. How are we standing? Total victory in South Africa, Hawaiian missile crisis, stalemate, Philippine landing, Malaya insurgency, Malagasy, civil war. Oh, good, good. Well, wow, our score, 3 d 1677 Wow, either the Germans are the real losers here. That sucks. Increased public support, we're good. Uh, actually, we, yeah, actually, this is really bad. Why am I doing this? Why am I suppressing the, cent the center? That makes no sense. That's the, why am I doing that? We want the center, we want the Republicans, for the most part. Oh, we can encourage private investments. Oh, crap. It's fine. Excuse me, sir. Thank you. Come again. You know what? You're not that far ahead. Screw it. Abol Congress kills right to work abolishment bill. Oh, this sucks. Oh, I should have double checked that one. We'll, we'll look at that in just a little bit again. Is that one? So, if you want to this, please go right 
Ahead, the nomination of Thurgood Marshall. In a press conference that has dominated headlines across the country today, President John Glenn has announced that Thurgood Marshall, currently judging the U.S. Court of Appeals for Second Court Circuit, will be nominated to the newly vacant seat on the Supreme Court. Marshall, a graduate of Howard Law School and an experienced civil rights litigator, will be a first African American to serve on the highest court in the land. His appointment would surely mark a turning point in American history. However, some in the Congress are not willing so not so willing to see such a point turn in the first place. Many senators come from the South and are directly relying on white voter blocs who aren't well disposed towards putting a black man on the Supreme Court. Several members of the Senate have already put out statements to this express to the press. To the press, expressing their firm opposition, although nobody's come out and said that it would be due to Marshall's race. Instead, they at least mentioned the dangers of liberal judicial activism and other such phrases. Clearly, the appointment of Thurgood Marshall will be a political fight for the ages. The right thing, the right time, the right man, the right place, I hope. Congress bill, or Congress passes the bill abolishing the right to work. After months of preparation within the West Wing, the bill forwarding the notion of abolishing the United States' rights to work laws has been successfully approved by the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. President Glenn regards the signing of the bill into laws as being a mass success for the American working citizen. And a crucial part of ending the stranglehold held by unfair workplaces and businessmen and the oppression of the workers. The Glenn administration is not the only group singing praise towards the passage of the bill, as many within the Department of Commerce has given one. Even large signs of approval towards the president and his cause and the difficulties of the American working class. The right to work law safeguarding a worker's right to not participate in a workers' union has been criticized by many common citizens. A coal miner from Virginia offered his applause to Glenn today as he said that lots of people out there believe the president is trying to get rid of us workers' rights. However, I have to say, knowing that a lot of folk out there who try to reap the benefits of unions without actually giving anything up, I think he has some pretty darn good intentions in what he's doing up there in the White House. Many such hard-working citizens stood in praise of the bill's final success in the legislative process, and many continued celebrating the night, allowing for them to return to work more safe and secure than ever before. However, that's not to say that everyone agrees with the Glenn administration's work to end the right to work. Many large business owners have offered criticism to the press in response to the passage of the bill. We business owners of America find that this bill is grouping us all together in some f form of oppressive class in America today. I run a business, a business with regulations that I find fair or else I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have employees in the first place. President Glenn is looking to sink the American economy to the ground. As both parties celebrate and brood over the successes and losses, time can only tell how the American working environment will be changed by the Glenn administration's work. With unity and freedom for the workers of America. Well, Darn it, we only got an eight hour workday. Man. Well, now what? Now we have a deficit. I mean, even cutting this down, it won't get rid of the deficit anymore, so. Uh. I think we were to try that. Yeah, we still have a deficit. And that hurt, oh, and that hurt growth quite, quite a bit. Oh my gosh. But whatever. It is what it is. Alright, friends of the center. Or how about the language? There is one earlier. Yeah, I think I've read this one before. So if you want to read this again, please go ahead. Yeah. And then hammer out the language. While we've managed to organize a supporting base behind the creation of the Social Security Act, we need to get to work on the next most important part of its creation. The writing and contents of the bill itself, obviously. The bill is proving to be one of the most extensive social programs organized in American history. But we need to be effective in its wording and focus us so that we do not lose the program into inefficiency and bureaucracy. The paragraphs of the bill must be examined by the administration and experts alike to guarantee success. Furthermore, the bill has already proved to be controversial since its conception, especially among the NPP's far, uh, right-leaning branch. So we must consider this, who this bill will be going up against and how to make it both successful and viable. Americans have long faced difficulties for their nation while we are long overdue for a program created to pay them back for everything they've done for their nation. A man who wants to declare that you do not you do what you think is right and let the man law catch up. What I'll say the most important judicial institution in the United States of America. In decisive vote in the Senate today, the Thurgood Marshall is confirmed as the newest Associate Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Justice Marshall will be the first African American to serve on the court, and this confirmation is undoubtedly a victory for the Civil Rights Movement, which he himself has worked tirelessly to advance. During his confirmation hearing, a number of conservative senators rallied against judicial activism and made a variety of statements that many commentators have called little better than dog whistles. Some even asked whether or not Marshall had ties to American Bolsheviks. The strategy failed, however. At a press conference today, Justice Marshall stated his gratitude to the Senate and to the people of America for posting for pictures with his two sons and his wife, the civil rights activist Cecilia Suyat Marshall. A truly historic moment for the nation, representing the triumph of justice over institutional racism. Let's hope so, anyways. I'll give that one, why not? Because we can. Make it a little different. Cool. Can we spend any more money for NASA? NASA, please? Please? Private investments? I mean, at least we have a little pocket of reserves. And I'm probably not going to cut do the temp tax side anymore. This one's okay, but still. That's an RD campaign. Not bad. Not bad. 
Hmm. Sounds like turning more and more towards the MPP. It's pretty much the coast. Friends in the center, huh? Well, it's only August. We got a few more months left. That's not too bad. There you go. Thunderbolts, thank you. Operational success, good. All right, increase public support with 97%. That's fine. Just keep increasing their budget. We're going to need a lot of budget. All right, so where are we at now? That's looking pretty good. Middling support, not bad. Not bad over here, not great, but not bad. It's high. Uh, uh, wow, that's a solid block. Let's come over here. We can probably do actually do wall over here too. Cool. Hammer out the language. And the Social Security Act. The administration cabinet, experts from a multitude of academic fields, people from a wide range of groups have met to discuss, debate, and finalize changes and amendments to the clause of the Social Security Bill. Americans are out there suffering from the lack of financial confidence and will not get better without action, however. After months of work, the Glenn administration has found to be the right time to introduce a bill to Congress to be voted into law. <clears throat> The various factions of the American government have already rallied to taking sides and made up their mind about the bill. With hope the Congress of the United States might ought to be more than willing to accept the act of care that we have pieced together, we must move fast before our support is lost. Once American citizens stand proudly for the administration with such success, we may move forward with more pertinent projects as well and channel funding to the Space Administration later, to subsidize or not. President Glenn all throughout his electoral campaign pushed for the introduction of Social Security, an idea that was proposed and promptly defeated during the administration of Kennedy Sr. and Zuis and Reeks. The president has been pushing for the reintroduction of this concept into reality in accordance with his campaign promises in a recent press conference. He said that he and his congressional allies were currently drafting a new Social Security bill. It's unlikely, unclear exactly how far this new welfare bill will go, but if the president's comments during his campaign are anything to go by, it will most likely prove fairly comprehensive and extensive. It will at least cover all Americans over the age of 65 years and older, and those who have disabilities which prevent them from working. There appears to be some debate among the RD party as to exactly how strong these benefits will be. The more conservative congressmen in the party, mainly Democrats, have said that the retirement fund offered by the program should only be from the taxes and trusts that retirees put in, into their, during their working years. The more liberal elements of the party, mainly the Republicans, claim that while Social Security might trust fund, it's an essential part of the process. There's simply not enough to cover the needs of most Americans in their twilight years and that the federal budget must be adjusted such that the government directly subsidizes the trust fund. And this plan, the Americans who claim Social Security will receive more in welfare claims than they put in while employed. Should the president pursue the more comprehensive subsidized Social, social Security, the bills anticipate to lose quite a bit of support from the Democrats, as well as receive a flat-out rejection from the far-right MPP. The bill is yet to be fully drafted, however, so the question remains, how far will President Glenn go? He got out of the Dems' pass? Nope. Give that too. More money for NASA, please. And nuclear reactor. There you go. Cool. So Security Act. We'll see what happens. Um, also, I was wondering, like, we looked at. The, uh, is there anything for voting? No. Um, for the presidential election, so we can see like 1960 here, which was a blowout for Thurman, an absolute blowout. Um, but the 64, of course, and the 68. If we look at the amount of votes, 47 basically to about 20 million. We have 34 to 34. That's almost equal. And then 37 to 30. Almost equal here. Holy crap. This is really well, not good. But, like, I wanted to see, like, what percentage of the population actually voted for candidates. Something like that. I think that would be cool to throw in there in the future. I think that would be really, actually really, really cool. So, yeah. I don't know. I think there could be a little more stuff done. Like, like with all the Social Security thing, like, can we get, like, population numbers? Population growth? Projected population growth by like the CBO, or if we have that established at all, I want too much. But you know what? The TNO dads have gone very far with TNO, so and they're, and they're going to keep pushing to go even further. So hopefully, in the future, like I would love to see stuff like that. But then again, who am I? Then again, can we get TNO when Vicky, Vicky Three comes out? Oh my God, I would love that so much. We we'd probably get shut down. Oh come on, our terrible RD campaign. Are you kidding me? But yeah, we'd probably get shut down pretty easily. Pretty quickly. <laughs> no, no, it's a genocide. Just don't say it's a genocide and it'll be okay. Anyways. Alright, hammer out that language in the bill. Wait, what? Why did he leave? Nothing here? Coverage conundrum. In the process of hammering out the details of a soon-to-be-finished Social Security Act, President John Glenn has faced significant opposition to exactly how far the medical aid aspect of the program called Medicare will go. 
The President himself has made it clear that he supports a very strong Medicare system, in which all those over the age of 65 or suffer from a disability have their health care expenses met in full. Those who likely require additional government subsidization of Social Security are an even angrier mob of conservatives in Congress. The Dems. As can be expected, propose a more moderate but still comprehensive plan. In it, Medicare would only cover roughly 30 to 50 percent of health care expenses for eligible individuals. Bennett, generally considered the leader of the Democrats in the Senate, it's clear that he will absolutely not support a Medicare plan that wastes so much money on coverage that the average retiree doesn't need. Some congressmen in the far right MPP have expressed slight amiability towards the Democratic proposal, but made it very clear that the president's position is simply unacceptable. Without much conservative support, there is no question. There is a question as to whether the bill will pass at all. As such, the president of the party must make a choice between his desire to cover all health care costs under Medicare and his need for party unity and bipartisan support on the bill. You're getting more and more of the government involved in health care and stuff. This can only go well, right? Huh, <laughs> can only go well. Clean government is the best government. While successful in our progress towards social reform, the administration is a new worry to focus on, which co continues to bring down public opinion of the government. The darn corruptible found, corruption found all over the place, ever since Nixon, or probably even before him. The American public has been worried sick over the possibility of corrupt of public disgraces such as the corruption found within Nixon's wrongdoing. Even worse, as Nixon's actions did not only affect the federal government as a whole, but specifically their RD party stability. Failure is not an option within the American government. It's about time we make sure of it. It's time we dredge up and throw out any remaining factors of corruption within our government. It's within our best efforts to make sure that we have earned their trust and respect of the citizenry before we experience chaos on a national level. And earning their trust, we can show them that we mean the best for them and we're not just selfish politicians of the day. Even though we might still be. Mm. Ah, continue campaigning. Not bad up there. Um, we just campaigned here too. I want Texas. I really want Texas. It's middling support though. So RD support's very low. Doing anything here is, would be a waste of time. RD support's very high. Okay. Let's do it. Good gun. Up here maybe. Stockholm conference opening. If you want to put that, please go ahead. How do the Germans respond? Oh, we have deficit of point. Okay, that's not too bad. The Germans agreed a hotline. Okay, on to the next proposal. Okay. If you want to read about Stockholm, actually, yeah, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. That's interesting. We made history, okay. Oh, okay, so now we have a surplus. Okay, so if we don't do the ta tax cut, we don't get any more growth, but it doesn't help us out that much anyways. But we do still have, never mind, we have quite the heck of a surplus. I kind of want to do that one, but I don't want any deficit. Not in, no deficit because the public expects no deficit, especially for right now. So, what is it? Political landscape? Yeah. They expect that our debt as a percentage of GDP should be less than 0%, which is pretty hard to get. So, actually, 430 billion? Well, we nailed that one. So, wait, when do we vote on Social Security? Uh, city on a hill? We want as much public support as possible, and then we're just going to rush through all this other stuff. Because basically we're two years into President Glenn's presidency already, which is kind of crazy to think about, but whatever. 200% growth, huh? But, eventually, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Same tax hike. Nah, we're good. Uh, social expenditures. How are we doing with all this stuff? It's alright. We're not doing great, but whatever. Oh, wait, what is this? Oh, crap. No, not global commitments. Well, we're getting involved, aren't we? Forgot about all that stuff. Oh, it is 1970. Clean government's the best government. It fails? Oh, no. Unfortunate news? Well, that sucks. That's going to be stinging us in the approval ratings. But let's see if we can fix that around. Socially secured. Exciting news from Washington today. As President John Glenn's Social Security Act was officially passed through Congress, with well, the President himself expected to sign the bill into law within the week. The bill, largely based off one proposed by the administration's Kennedy Sr., was nearly pushed through in a vote hotly contested by the uh, right MPP. While the more conservative Dems among the RDs initially seemed hesitant to sanction such an expensive program, it quickly became once, and so the President was open to compromising on the issue. Huh. 
under this new welfare program. All Americans over the age of 65 years and those grievously affected by disabilities are now permitted to claim a monthly financial stipend from the U.S. government. The actual amount of assistance given by the stipend varies from person to person, as it's based on percentage of taxes paid during the claimant's working years. Americans can breathe a little easier now. Public support will increase significantly. Huh. And GDP growth will decrease by 1.5%. Well, that's great. Poverty will get better, but there goes growth. Yeah, that sucks. Emergency support with local low income protections. Fend off big business? Although we have successfully moved forward with establishing future methods of dealing with the corrupt actions of the U.S. politicians in the future, it would be dishonest to claim that we do not suffer from such disgusting acts of injustice in our government body already. The American people have grown sick and tired of corrupt actions of the government. Well, the blemishes of the past, and it's our duty to reach out to such weary souls and bring them hope. So I launch a full scale investigation into any hints of corruption that might spring up in a government, whether it's one lawmaker or a hundred, it's our duty to make sure every bit of it is stamped out. The gross faults of the leaders of the U.S. in the past have allowed countless citizens to suffer under the burden of corruption, allowing for such low-reaching souls to prosper while the honest man falls. And we cannot allow such injustices to happen in our prosperous democracy any longer. Also, can we do anything else over here yet? So, yeah, totally didn't use consequence. Totally didn't. Well, not yet. Very low. Good campaign, good. And let's see what happens with the at least the elections. Ooh, anything else here? Ooh. Ooh, eh, whatever. Who cares? NASA needs money. Money, money. 98%. That's still really good. How is this so good still? There you go. Oh, yeah. Here's a cheap mod, too. I haven't done anything with that stuff yet, but we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. More armor, huh? For good, we don't really need to put any armor on. Alright. The dispatch from Cairo. Regimes in the Middle East today, uh, these days at least, look like an all wrong tree. Men are wilding, but it's hard to predict whether they'll fall here in Egypt. Situations are different. Inspired by uprisings in neighboring countries, this is in Cairo. Uh, <clears throat> this week took, a, took the streets to protest the government that they claim is more beholden to Italian interests than their own, the unrest. A loud, phlegm filled cop forced Mark Dan of Chicago's Tribune to look upon his portable typewriter. Standing before him, in the cramped hallway of his hotel was a man dressed in the uniform of an Egyptian palace guard. In the corner of his mouth was a large cigar. He removed the cigar and made another guttural noise with his throat. Knew the Americans asking around for her. He twirled the hand holding the cigar. Sources? Mark gave a confused smile. I'm on a deadline, but uh, yeah, of course. Are You are? The man stuck the cigar back in his mouth. I can get you in the palace for 30 American dollars. Mark Daniels blinked. He blinked again. Do you have any idea how many people I've had to bribe already today? The taxi driver was going to let some religious fanatics kill me unless I gave him five bucks. The police officer outside threatened. Two hundred American dollars for a big time scoop, as you say. No one else has this offer, the man said. Based on the expensive cigar, Mark somehow doubted that out was true. Maybe bring a photographer and five extra dollars and you can get some nice photos for your bosses. Mark massaged the bridge of his nose. The tribune's accounting department was going to kill him for the subsidizing the income of every crook guard, policeman, and bureaucrat in Egypt, but they knew how to get sources, and he wasn't about to lose out on an exclusive to the effing times. He sat down his tap and took out his wallet. I'll give you ten bucks, that's fine. That's all I got. That's all I got. Wow, that growth sucks. Oh, Social Security hurts us so badly. Oh, their plus got cut by 10 billion. Oh, now I don't want to help other poor people. Social expenditures. Slash. Slash, slash. Yeah, it's economy. Darn it. I wonder if this was going ahead. Uh, Americans vote with their pocketbooks. And the economy's getting worse. Well, not worse. Well, it's not as good as it used to be, but whatever. So, so why can't we send volunteers now? Now I can send volunteers to you. Oh, I can send three. That's kind of nice. Do I need bridge? Yeah, if you have marines. Here. You're better on attack, though. Cool. Can up on Yim, which sucks. Here, you can do that stuff. Uh, you can do that one, too. Money. It's fine. Of course, we don't really care for either side here, but whatever. No supportive faction in Yemen. Tangibles, and frankly, I believe that, that Glenn's welfare programs are put in the cart before the horse. Of course, our society has to take care of our most vulnerable members, but Social Security just misses the mark in so many ways, which is yet another sign of bzz. And just like that, the TV was turned off. The images on the screen vanished in an instant, like they never existed at all, with only the black screen remaining. It was very typical politics in general. Charles thought somebody, something entirely inconsequential and material, detached from the material world and an ethereal imagination, entirely unrelated to the real world. Politicians talk, they lie, promise, and threaten, but in the end, none of that ended up mattering when it came to him and his undeserved community somewhere in West Virginia. <clears throat> However, Glenn provided something that wasn't ethereal. 
A social security check was a physical existing object not affected by metaphysical concepts or cunning rhetorics. It was a sign that the man sitting in Washington Ivory's tower could actually do something for him if he, and if he wanted to. And in the seven decades on this earth, this was one of the few times they actually did so. Talking heads might say that he focuses too much on NASA and such, but so what? Theoretical assessments are nothing more than empty mirages chattering against the fact that Glenn was the first politician in a while to put some money in his pocket. Let him land on the moon if he wants to. Let him land on Mars, Europa, Sun, who cares what they say about that? The suit who keeps calling the space program a meaningless waste of government funds never attempted to subsidize his retirement, that's for sure. Why can't all politicians be like this Glenn guy? This little piece of paper did more to improve Charles Luth than all the millions and billions thrown into the endless pits known as South Africa and Indonesia. America can take care of its disadvantaged people, Charles thought. Only it only needs the will to do so. As long as you pay people to vote for you. An arduous process. Which I don't understand. What, who's Mark Travis? What's his I guess the far right's getting more support here, I guess. That makes sense. He's at forty one percent. Far right's doing quite well. And Gus Hall's here too, and Yaki. Oh we can uh, do this too. Looking definitely all right for now. We, we won't have enough time to do this, but let's do this one because we can. RDs are sucking hard in the, in the Midwest. Fend off big businesses, of course. Oh, crap. They're having fun. Did I read this one? Yeah. And this one has what? Yeah. Admin efficiency. Public support increase. Well, this is pretty good to do as well. Let's do this one. Yeah. Crackdown on corruption. Although our successes at administration have been proof for the American people, the success of the working man have revealed a blanket of corruption or corrupt ties between the current legislation. The continuous complaints of the general public about our administration revealed a key detail in their monopolist control of the market. The tax incentives present, and the current legislation allows these massive businesses to continuously grow bigger, eventually giving way to the establishment of unfair business practices. Considering our administration is aimed at cutting out unfair business practices as well as the destruction of corrupt elements of the government, it is without a doubt it's a necessity to repeal such tax policies, as it is unquestionable that these huge marketplaces have already sunk their fortunes into the pockets of representatives and senators vouching for them. For sake of the American fairness and equality, we must deal with these burdens on society. All right, boys and girls, what has happened here? Well, it's an epic old concession, so. Anything else we care about? Increased commitment? Oh, we about uh, in Egypt as well. Oh, wow. Holy crap. Oh, I guess... Oh. Egypt didn't lose the other group of part of Egypt. Is that normal? Um, I guess not really supporting a faction either. 29? Oh, wait. Is this supposed to fire November? Uh. Oh crap. I guess I'm four. That's not bad. Trucks. Crap. We only have. Ooh. Marines are not bad. I would honestly prefer to make more helicopters. Oh, there goes De Gaulle. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh man. Oh no! Oh my gosh! Oh, this is how Sudan's actually gonna collapse now, huh? It's different. Very different than before. That, from what I remember. We just let you guys just all go at the same time, maybe. The beginning of the next episode is gonna have us just kind of go kind of crazy here. Uh, do we have air superiority at all? Where are the planes at? God dang it. I hate, I hate that. That This should be an option. And this is not a TNO thing. It's just a Hoi 4 thing in general. But when you, like, <clears throat> win the Civil War, wherever, whatever you're actually supposed to win, um, or at least in general, like, tell, like if you want to make planes, just don't all go to one location after the, after the war's done. I think it'd be kind of nice. Can you see any planes there? Not really. Uh, oh my gosh. Egypt is such a mess. Sudan. There you go. I don't really want to send anybody down there. I can send the... Some... Marines, I guess? We can send 30 and 30, huh? 30, 30. Jesus. Right, and Sudan, you should have the planes. Oh, oh, crap. Oh, now we're going to send 20. What?
Well, Crudola. Where are we at this? Oh, come on. Please let us get to this one first. And then we'll look at the Senate stuff. It's probably hopefully get better. And again, we just said the oil crisis is rough, so probably not. Machine falters? Oh, no, 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 no. A speech of St. Louis. <clears throat> Mr. President, they're ready for you. The diligent special agent said to President Glenn, who had been sitting backstage preparing for the biggest speech today. Glenn thought of the crowds of people willing to attend a public speech, especially one regarding the sheer corruption of the government and how many he may help change a few people's days around for the better. A smile grew on the Ohioan's face. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the U.S. President, John Glenn, to the stage. The governor of Missouri said, before, before being rushed with exuberant cheers from the crowd, as President Glenn emerged on stage, giving a wide smile and the wave of his hand to greet the growing crowd before him. Stepping up to the podium, Glenn began a speech. Good morning, my fellow Americans. Before we begin, may we offer a large thank you for your state's hard-working governor for allowing me out here today. The crowd cheered his name with laughter and joy. Glenn eyed several poster boards made for the event, including one marked Shoot for the Stars, with a rocket ship and a star next to it, giving the president a good laugh. Now, I know everyone is anxious about our administration's new project, so let me explain. <clears throat> my dear Americans, it has been my duty to instill a sense of duty and empathy within every American citizen, and while we haven't progressed tremendously in our goals, there remains a great obstacle in our path, corruption. Government officials who have become stooped down low to lowly levels in an attempt to earn more for themselves and will bring the consequences of such behavior into federal processes. It ain't right, it ain't fair, and we must not allow it to continue any further. Whether it be in the legislative branch or the executive branch, our administration stands ready to combat any form of corruption which seeks to plague our nation any further. The crowd of Northerners and Midwesterners stood in awe of the President, but soon grew into loud cheers as the President went on. For liberty and for justice for all. Uh, why? I hate the oil crisis so much. But I think it's pretty much all the same. If you wonder about this one, please go right ahead. Um, set the prices if you want to this one, as well as the Federal Energy Office. It's generally all the same as well. So, yeah. All synthetic alternative. Enforced rationing. Oh boy, and disaster averted. So there's all that. I'm probably going to do all that stuff off screen if possible. Oh, growth has actually been hurt really bad. I'd love to do that, but we'll see what happens. That's really bad, yeah. Oh, that's not good. But let's take a look how many senators we have. We have... Oh, look at that. So that's how it ended. 42 Republicans, 17 Democrats. We got plus three in total, and way more Republicans than Democrats now. We have... We lost 13 Senate MPP senators, and, but we did get 10 more at far right. So which does kind of suck, but it is what it is. America's really divided, as it should be. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. When we will try to not be hurting too badly economically, uh, fuel-wise, and have a good time in the Middle East. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.